Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai. Call Halal La, Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shai. That's Hebrew, interpret, bless Yahawa, bless Yahawa Shai. All praises to the Father Yahawa in the name of the Son, Yahawa Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I got a quick lesson. It's going to be real short. And it's, on based, on, it's based around the meaning of the word vexed. Vex. All right, this is the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the word vexed. It says to bring trouble, distress, or agitation to. To bring physical distress to. To irritate or annoy by pretty provocations. All right, so the word vex means to be trouble, distress, or aggravation. Okay, so when you have these symptoms, you go through these things, you're being vexed in your spirit. And... You can either be vexed in righteousness or be vexed in wickedness, you know, because those that the Most High punish, all right, for their wickedness, they're vexed. And also the men of the Lord, you know, that are suffering righteously and in the, for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's sake, you're actually suffering, you're, you're vexed and you're suffering, you know. And um, in this day and age, you know, which is the last, the last days, you know, we like to say, or the end of the world, which is meaning the end of Esau's kingdom. You know, we're all going to be vexed. Some vexed in righteousness, some vexed in wickedness. All right. And uh, I did a lesson maybe a while ago about Lot, you know, being vexed of this filthy, this, uh, you know, being vexed of the filthy conversation that went on when he was in Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. And those cities of Balmanna. When he was dealing, you know, he had to deal with the homosexuality and and the transsexuals and things are the filthy abominable things that people create or do you know he was vexed so of course you know uh you know uh jude so like i think i might say joe jude jude was uh was crying out to the lord all right and that's the same manner the same uh, uh thing we're doing you know hey i said job maybe if i said job by accident but job is also a prime example of suffering he was vexed you know when satan came and uh tried to destroy his faith that he had and his integrity that he had toward yahweh bashim yahweh shai you know the scriptures say in sirach the second chapter he says my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation all right so meaning you're going to be tempted by satan and what you're going to go through sufferings and you're going to be vexed you know but it's a beautiful thing, all right, to, um, well, I wouldn't say it's a beautiful thing to be vexed because obviously it's stress, it's distress, it's aggravation, it's being troubled. But just know that there's a kingdom waiting upon us. There's a reward, a good reward, not a bad one, but a good reward that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to bring unto us, all right? So it says to bring trouble, distress, or, ag or agitation to, you know? You know, a lot of people in the streets, they say, oh, you Aggie. They, they say that a lot of here in Jersey, a lot of women. You know, oh, you Aggie, you Aggie, you Aggie. All right. But um, I'm just going to tackle a few scriptures. Lord willing, I hope to edify. And uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. It says, And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men, that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. All right. So that, you know, the Lord sent the angels out, you know, to basically put a mark upon the men of the Lord. You know, who the Lord find fit that was serving him, that believed in him because they were vexed for the wickedness that was going on. And that mark, the word mark there is not the same word in Mark in written in Revelations, which is the mark of the beast. This mark. When you go into the Hebrew word, it's the wah, all right? The wah, which means exemption. Exempt from what? Exempt from judgment. Because who brings judgment on the earth? Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, so I'm going to read again. And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men 
that sigh and that cry. So that sighing and crying lets you know that these were meant righteous men, all right, women that sighed and cried. They were vexed and right. They was vexed uh, of the wickedness. All right. It says that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the, mix, the midst thereof. And truly, we're vexed today because we have to pray. You know, the Lord. You know, we have to pray to the Lord. <laughs> Okay, I thought the camera was going to cut off. But um we're truly vexed today because you know the Lord the Lord um uh puts he puts us through these uh he allows us to live in this God forsaken place. You know, and all of the morals of man, you know, is basically getting thrown out the window and wickedness is skyrocketed, you know, above above righteousness, you know, just above common sense. You know, wickedness has increased even more than common sense, man. You know, when common sense and nature is supposed to be, you know, a norm. But here it is, wickedness is at its all time high. So you so you so you know that the men of the Lord are vexed and we're praying to the Lord every day while we're vexed. And that's what we're supposed to do. So let me read again. It says, um, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So, you know. Today we're crying out to the Lord Being vexed for all the abominations And abomination just means filthy acts There's so many filthy acts And you know things that are uh, uh, You know wicked That goes on every day Alright Let me see here um, And I got another quick precept And I'm just going to end it with that You know I said this lesson was going to be quick Lord willing Hopefully edifying to those of the whole for elect you know, just know that you're not the, you're not the only one being vexed. You know, you have to channel your energy when you're angry and you're distressed. You in tr you you being troubled in the spirit. You can't make ends meet. Things are happening. You know, you're in a situation. Just know you're not the only brother that's being vexed. We all hate this place. We hate this life. You know, we hate it. We're bitter. Yes. You know, because we're in a God forsaken place. You know, we're in the most wickedest, sinful kingdom on the planet. For those that saw it in Babylon, which is known as America, and other brothers out there, four corners. I know y'all stressed as well under the orders and slavery, uh, 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 the slaveryness of Esau. All right. So now this is Second Peter chapter two, and um, this is Second Peter chapter two, and verse, and verse six, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And to ashes condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So the Lord is letting us know that Sodom and Gomorrah was what? An example for anybody else to live ungodly in these manners. And we know the prime, the, the main thing that was going on was what? Homosexuality, all right? Uh, incest, you know, men claiming to be women, women claiming to be men, you know, bestiality, you name it. It was going on. So it says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that are that should make an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Alright? It says, and deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So throughout those cities, the only ones that were delivered was Lot and his family. Okay? So how much more, you know, in this day and age, in this second death, where the Lord is actually going to destroy Babylon the Great, you know, and make a great deliverance before all the world, you know? Because the first death came with what? Noah, when the Most High flooded the earth with water, okay? Because there it was it's basically water and fire is a, is a cleansing, cleansing mechanism, all right? It's a cleansing agent, let me say, Slaki. It's a cleansing agent, okay? And this place has to be cleansed. And the only way it could be cleansed is by the blood that was shed thereof. You know, by the by him that shed of the blood. Alright? Excuse me. Now this is verse 8. It says, For the righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So as the scriptures tell us, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. Even Lot was vexed day by day, man. 
day by day, you know, every day, man, every day, you know, I'm, I'm doing this lesson, you know, also, you know, first, first and foremost for myself, because, uh, you know, I get hot tempered and I have to take a chill because I hate this place. The people, our people, so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics and Native and Seminole Indians, you know, our people that we live around, you know, they're wicked, they're gone, they're finished for. Them. There's no talking to them, there's no helping them. You know, they don't want, they don't, they, hey, they despise the word of the Lord. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't bring these people back. And ultimately it's because the most high done it. The Lord done it, man. The most high don't, don't want them. The scriptures say he must know it after death by pain. Meaning you're going to have to die on this side in order for you to get the truth. In order for you to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Fear the heavenly father and his son. Because there is no more fear. There is no more fear in Jake to fear the creator. You know? So, hey man, you know, brothers are like-minded. I, I, know, I know how you feel, man. Um, it says, verse 8. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, man. The black woman is out of her mind. The, these niggas are out of their mind. The youth, the, the children, they are out of their mind. The styles, the drugs. These people, Jake is out of their mind, man. Out of their mind, man. The, the so-called new things that they are doing, you know? Uh, verse 9 The Lord knoweth how to deliver The godly out of temptation Alright And um, I'm just going to look the word temptation up real quick Temptation Here's the definition of temptation The desire to do something Especially something wrong or unwise Right Because Satan is the tempter He's the You know t Temptation is The desire to do something Especially something wrong or unwise, man. Something wrong or unwise. Satan wants you to do something wrong or something that's unwise to do. You know? And that's how you get caught out there. That's how, you know, Satan gets you to bite the bait. And then you're going against your maker. You're going against your, your, your power. And that, make, that makes you vulnerable to see, to see judgment upon you. You know, for the Lord to put judgment upon you to correct you. Or the Lord just off you, man. You know? Uh, scriptures say, a just man shall fall if seven times, but get up. So even just men can go off to do something unwise, you know? All right? Something wrong. But guess what? If the brother got the spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit, the Rakakodash, and he's fighting in his truth... It ain't nothing for him to get it to, to get corrected and to do it right, you know, and learn and use that as experience to retain the wisdom behind it, man. Whatever the situation may have been, so that now he can do what? Teach others, you know, to not be unwise, you know, to not be tempted uh, tempted from Satan, man. You know, Esau uses temptation all the time. He hopes that you he scoffs the channel. He does certain things. He take down your channel. You know, taking videos down. They used to come by the camp and, and entice you to hit them. They used to do all that just to tempt you to do something wrong or unwise. That is Satan. That's the adversary, man. Okay? That's the adversary. The adversary of the most high. And you should and, and for those that, that 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 knows this truth, you should hey, you might be a newly fruit coming in, just getting around to learn this truth. You're learning. You should clearly see that he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Esau, Edom is the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. You know? And you should clearly understand why the Lord said Romans 9 and 13, Malachi 1, 2, 3, where he said he loved Jacob but hated Esau. You should understand that. Nobody should be able to seduce your spirit, man. You know, and take your faith away from you. Because that's going on too. Seducing spirits, demons, man. All right, to, to stray you away, to pervert, you know, to go back. All right, 
But the faithful elect is going to stand all the way so they be delivered, man. All right, so I want to get back to the scripture. This is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. So you better believe it, man. Mm -hmm. If we fight, if we fight against Satan and not be for Satan, the Most High know how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Because the scriptures tell us, hey, if you ignore Satan, he will flee from you. And that goes, that, that goes toward your thoughts, man. Your thoughts is your biggest demon. Scriptures say the mind is uh, wicked. The, the mind is desperately wicked. And who can know it? You know? So the first step is yourself. It's you. I. All right? And you got to fight. Fight those thoughts. Probably vexed. Probably mad. You know? The scriptures say be ye angry but sin not. You don't want to go against the Lord because that's when... You know, you're fucked, you're done, you know That's it, you ain't got no help, you know And the Lord is truly helping us, man Every day, to keep striving and pushing The Lord is there Alright It says, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation And to reserve That's a good word right there That's a good word Uh, let me see something Nah Bear with me. So I'm driving. That's a good word. Okay, uh, reserve, quick Google search. Um, it says, to reserve is to stash something away or to set it aside for the future use. <laughs> yeah, man. All praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Call Halal La, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, man. All right, the word reserve, which we know, but it's beautiful just to look up the words. Hey, the, our apostles taught us that. You know, it's like marinating that chicken, man. Marinating that, that meat, you know, makes the season and makes it taste more, more good, man. Hey, what's meat without some salt? A little bit of salt, man. All right, Israel is that salt. So it says to reserve is to stash something away or to set it aside for future use. It says reserve can also refer to backup supplies or resources. And guess what? The elect... The men of the Lord are the resources and the supplies that the Heavenly Father use in the earth. Hey, check that out, man. The elect, starting with the men, all right? Because the men are first. The men is going to be changed, man. The men is going to be the, the, the uh, new gold, man, okay? That, that every woman going to want to be a part of, the elect. The elect men. The elect men are the supplies and resources that the Most High uses in the earth. They the utensils. They are the tools. You know, if the Lord Yahweh Shai said he was a carpenter, so he was a handyman. So obviously he, he used tools. The tools he used get the job done. Well, guess what? Where are the tools? Where are the supplies? All right? Where are the resource that the Lord used? All right? As a messenger, an angel, to deliver his word. Okay? Hey, really to uh get Israel together. Yahweh Shai came down, he laid his life down, and we're continuing continuing the ministry until he comes. Because he he uh, he made us into those sharp tools. Hey, the scriptures talk about an adamant stone, a sharp stone. Where that sharp stone? You know, you got Israel being a stone itself, stiff neck, hard headed, and rebellious. Alright? But but the prophets are an adamant stone meaning they are a sharp stone if you sharpen the edge of a stone and you are right, you got two stones you got one that's dull just a regular rounded rock and then you got another stone that's sharpened if you bang those stones together which one are gonna break the regular stone the stone that's not sharpened so the elect is an adamant stone man all right 
So I know I said I was gonna make this lesson quick, but I'm gonna finish it off. It says, um, uh, what was I at? I was at uh, 2 Peter chapter two and eight. For that righteous man dwelling among them, seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Verse nine, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So the Lord know how to reserve the righteous and being delivered. And he also know how to reserve the uh, wicked for the day of their judgment, man. So this is why the scriptures tell us in um, second Edges, I believe the ninth chapter, but it's, it says, um, uh, don't work roughly paraphrase and don't worry how the ungodly is punished, but worry how, but, 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 uh, it says don't roughly, I'm gonna roughly paraphrase it. It says basically don't worry how the ungodly is punished, but worry, but, 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 uh, uh not worry. I hate to use that word again. Anyway, so like it, uh, roughly paraphrasing, it says, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. I gotta find it. Um, bear with me. Find that second edge. I think it's nine. Let me see some. Don't worry how the ungodly is punished. Apocrypha. These came back from a search. Second edge is nine. 9 and 13. Let's try that. Second edge is 9 and 13. Right. Okay. It says, Second edge is chapter 9, verse 13. And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. All right. So that, that you know, that's the precept I was, I was trying to get out. All praise y'all by Chanel Shah, the water, the water, the water, the water, you know. And uh jumping back, second Peter chapter two and eight, it says, For that for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day, and their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. You know, and like I said, the Lord know how to reserve the righteous for the for uh, salvation. And he know how to reserve the wicked for the day of judgment, you know, and that's why it's important for us to inquire how the righteous is going to be saved, man. You know, so, uh, uh, repentance takes time and you have to understand this knowledge. You need the scriptures say the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times, you know. So we must inquire and be more curious how the righteous is going to be is going to be delivered, um, uh, you know, until the, you know, and not worry too much about how the wicked is going to be punished, you know, because you could get, you could be vexed by a wicked man or a wicked woman, you know, troubling your spirit, doing something to you, you know, them being right out evil, you know, and of course you put those prayers up and those curses up, but you know, let the Lord handle all that. You know, you actually, you end up forgetting about that person if you separate yourself and then next thing you know, the Lord will be, uh, be, be rewarding you and letting you know What's going on with them and, and hey, you'd be like, damn, that's the Lord's judgment for them, man. You know? And ultimately, hey, if the Lord don't get them now, he gonna get them right before he gonna get them at the very end. You know, the scriptures talk about how uh in Amos, you know, how uh you can get you know, uh uh from a lion, you know, you can run away from a bear, and then you can lean your hand on the wall and a serpent bit you, meaning you can't get away from judgment. So regardless, the wicked, you're not gonna go unpunished. And that's mainly to these Edomites first. You know, I'll say Jake first, and then you Edomites. You are not going unpunished from your wicked deeds, man. You're scoffing, all right? You're misusing the prophets. You're lying, you know, and, 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 you, and so on. Uh, this is verse 10. It says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of, and the lust of uncleanness and despise government, you know? What's the gut? The true government is Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, the, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. He's the uh, the ruling government that governs the world. He said, you know, earth is governing in the palm of his hand. That's how powerful our Lord is, man. That's how big he is, man. 
He's above earth. He said, earth is my footstool. Heaven is my throne. You know, he told uh, Solomon to his prophet, what, you know, what, uh, what house shall you build me? You know, it says uh, presumptuousness are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. And that's what this where I've come to, man. Jake is done for. Two thirds is finished. You know, Esau got him. You know, they done. It says they are presumptuous. Are they self-willed? That's that pride. You know, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, man. Evilness flows off their tongue like it ain't nothing. Like it's not wrong. You know, especially dealing with homosexuality. How many people are here justifying it, you know, and, and accepting that homosexual behavior? That shit is crazy. And now, uh, I believe in Philly or Pennsylvania, they have already started teaching children. I believe the brother uh, Chappelle in the camp. Mm -hmm. he, I think I think he would. I think the brother that was telling me about it. Somebody was telling me about it. How parents were mad, you know, and they was upset because their children being taught homosexuality. Now, there was an article that came out and they said that in 2020, that here in New Jersey, all in New Jersey, children is gonna have to, um, you know, uh, take a course teaching them about homosexuality history, you know? And I could see them filling that in, you know, either in their history class or makes it more evil and wicked. Well, all of it is evil and wicked, but to make it more spiteful is that is if they take out you know, I remember when I was in school, and I believe these kids are still doing it. You know, you have one period, one mark. You have one um, half of the year where you do gym, and then another half of the year where you learn driver's ed, when you're supposed to learn how to drive. You take the test, they study and all that stuff. And or it'd be sex ed. I remember when I was in school, it was uh, sex ed. You know, they would have a, a diagram, a body of a man and a woman. You know, y'all, you know, you know. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that with that sex ed, you know, they will be teaching a second, uh, you know, second half of the school year of homosexuality, you know, and the teacher coming in and, you know, all that shit, man. You know, hey, this world is wicked and it's almost about due, man. Through prophecies left and this world is finished, man. So, you know, I'm going to leave it as that. Lord willing, I hope you guys were edified. You know, this lesson was based on being vexed. Hey, we're vexed every day. Lot was vexed every day. We're vexed every day, man. Job suffered. We suffer, man. And just like the rest of the prophets, Apostle Paul as well, you know. And uh, scriptures are here to comfort us. And the scriptures say comfort one another with these words. So, you know, with that, I hope you are edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.